the cold and the weather. I hope you can stay to watch some basketball that's going on at the Wendell Center. I appreciate you all being here. I especially want to thank our trustees who are here, our foundation board members, and our faculty and staff, and of course, you parents. appreciate your continued support. I have several exciting things to share about the numerous opportunities we have at Porter Gallup School and these opportunities that certainly make uh, a difference in the lives of our students. I want to share just a handful of stories that make up the fabric of our school. And you will hear some of our plans for the future and initiatives that we're going to put in place to help continue to reach our goals. Last month, I had the honor of spending five days in Haiti with the governing board of the National Association of Episcopal Schools. As a member, Porter Gowd joined some 1,200 schools around the country in this organization. And while a trip to Haiti seems a long way to go for a board meeting, there was a great purpose to this visit. The Diocese of Haiti, which is well connected with the United States, actually has more Episcopal schools than any state in our country, 254 this year and growing. <coughs> Many schools in the U.S., including Porter Gow, have partnerships there, and most Haitian clergy have studied in the United States. So these schools play a key role in the educational system in Haiti, and it was important for our governing board of the National Association to show its support. This was actually my second trip to Haiti. My first happened to be just four months after the devastating earthquake in 2010. It was already the poorest country in the Americas. Three quarters of the nine million people living there live on less than two dollars a day. And yet, here are 254 schools where pay, parents pay monthly tuition, as much as a hundred dollars a month. And impoverished children put on their best pressed uniforms and go to school, some walking multiple hours a day with the hope of really breaking a cycle. And these students are proud to attend the school, and they certainly deserve the respect for the work they put in. Education for them is a path out of poverty, perhaps a way to rebuild a broken country. And although it will likely take generations, these parents have made a great sacrifice so that their children can live a better life, really taking a first step to a systematic change. In the United States, we have much of the world's wealth, yet many of our schools fail. The U.S. spends more per capita on schooling than anyone in the world, and yet the standard of living is something people of Haiti can only dream of. Yet in a place like Haiti, even with unimaginable poverty, students can excel at these schools. Why? because they see the vast importance of education and they certainly understand the privilege to attend. They know that knowledge is a great equalizer. And in fact, they've embraced the ideals on which Dr. Anthony Toomer Porter built this school more than 146 years ago. Faith, honor, and knowledge. Excellence is expected, character is instilled, and promise is realized. Porter Gow stands as an example of, of what is right about education in America. Our graduates understand the responsibility that comes with their education. They are equipped with the skills to help guide the future. We offer a diverse curriculum, and together we work, and we awaken, and we coax, and we challenge, and we discuss and debate, we mentor, we nurture, and practice, push and we shape, we reinforce, and every day we inspire each other. Because we believe that learning is about opening up, not just to one thing or one idea, but to many things and to everything. Many schools offer challenging academics and other programs in arts and athletics. In fact, you can even go take stand classes from Stanford and MIT just right off the internet. But what makes Porter Gowd unique we believe is our mission and our soul. Our students here are incredibly engaged and creative, and our job is to see their potential and take them to places they never thought they'd go. 
Just last weekend, three fourth graders and two fifth graders represented Porter Gow in the South Carolina Elementary Honor Choir. These talented singers were selected by audition in October from a pool of nearly 500 fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students. They represented roughly 100 participating schools across the state. They spent three days with their peers rehearsing and performing together and giving a, a public performance at the end. Additionally, six students will represent Porter Gowd in the American Choral Directors Southern Division Choir in Jacksonville, Florida. And this does not happen by mistake. Exceptional teachers like Todd Munsell give these students opportunities to shine, not just on our campus, but beyond. Our lower school choir boasts 80 members, nearly half of whom are boys, numbers mostly unheard of at other schools. The 33 voice troublemakers ensemble has a number of exciting performances planned for the spring, including the Sweetgrass Children's Choir Invitational in Somerville, a friendship concert with the Savannah Children's Choir and Piccolo Scalade. They represent us very well. Four of our girls were recently recognized for national and state awards by the National Council of Women in Technology. Those same four will be making a group presentation as part of the Carolinas Women in Computing Conference. They are the only high school students presenting. Passionate teachers like Doug Burke make this possible. This year's upper school musical, West Side Story, is comprised of 47 upper school students and three faculty members. 21 of these students have never been in a musical, and yet you will surely be astonished by what they create on the stage. Their accomplishments make us proud. Last week, a few seniors signed on to continue their athletic careers in college. Two of our students, Michael Preddy, Phillips Marshall will play football next year for Georgia Tech and Western Carolina, respectively. And Brent Demarest, the Gatorade Runner of the Year, will continue his running and triathlon legacy at the University of Virginia. Our SKIZA school has, arguably, some of the best athletes in the state. Our students have practiced long and hard, and they make us proud. We offer as many as 59 athletic teams over three seasons. More than 85% of our students play on one or more of our interscholastic teams. This represents an astounding seasonal commitment and requires our student athletes to maintain well-organized academic planning. It is not a small feat. This year's seniors have logged an impressive number of early decisions at our nation's top universities and colleges. In fact, 93% of the senior class now has a place in college, even though regular decisions will not be mailed until April. In-state schools, all of which have become incredibly competitive, have given early acceptances to many of our students, and 90% of our graduates receive South Carolina lottery scholarships, Life and Palmetto, and many have already received offers of scholarship with their acceptance letters. Some of our out-of-state colleges that have accepted students already this year, the American University of Paris, Berkeley College of Music, Brown University, Bentley University, Carleton College, Dickinson College, Elon University, Fordham University, Georgia Tech, University of Georgia, Lewis and Clark College, University of Maryland, University of Miami, University of Michigan, UNC Chapel Hill, Pennsylvania State University, University of St. Andrews in Scotland, Texas A&M, Tulane, University of Virginia, Washington and Lee, Washington University in St. Louis, Wesleyan College, and the list goes on. A Porter Gowd education not only helps these students to be accepted, but to excel once they're there. One senior has received an appointment to both the United States Naval Academy and the United States Military Academy of West Point. He's also a finalist for the prestigious Park Scholarship at the University at NC State. Brendan traveled to South Africa last summer, thanks to the Richards Award, to do mission work and learn more about one of his heroes, Nelson Mandela. This experience has already shaped his life in many ways, and he's already making plans to go 
going back. Our students are incredibly bright, talented, and hardworking, while also striving to find meaning and purpose in their work. In the Porter Military 1943 admissions catalog, it speaks of the moral side of education. It says, we place this subject as the first in all that we attempt to teach, as character is worth more than all the rest combined. Indeed, without character, the rest had better be left unlearned. Upper school English teacher Anna Smith sent me this comment last week. I am constantly amazed at my students, some who have suffered devastating personal losses, but who craft these experiences into cathartic, powerful prose. Our kids, instead of allowing a defeat or disappointment to define them, instead create, striving for, the words that can give life to their memories and perceptions and that can produce renewal and hope. The resiliency and soul of our students is amazing. They describe the sublime beauty of a subset, sunset, the exhilaration of a triumph, the unlikely connection forged with a stranger. It's an honor to be part of their intellectual evolution. A group of 13 students spent part of last week and the weekend at the Model UN Conference in Georgia, joining many of the best students from around the Southeast. Our students offered five resolutions, second to only one other school, and they were able to gain support and pass two of them in one day, more than any other school on any single day. Our students received accolades for their work across their respective countries and continents, as one of only 20 schools recognized of the 120 represented impressive on any level, but especially when you consider this is the first time we've been. Last fall, our chaplain, Brian McGreevy, led a trip with water missions to Honduras with four of our rising 10th grade vestry members. The group stayed in Tacoa with water mission staff and worked on a variety of projects in various villages in the region. The students were able to construct a latrine shelter for one family dig a latrine pit for another in a remote village where there were no cars, no electricity, and no running water. They installed the first treatment system for a remote village, doing the wiring, plumbing, and pump construction themselves. They offered to the village children the first clean water ever provided in their area. The students have spoken to various local organizations about their experience and how it was part of a privilege it was a privilege to be part of such an unforgettable and life-changing trip. Again, they respected and represented us well. This month, Neil Urban will be visiting campus. He's a journalist with the Washington Post and soon to be writer for the New York Times. He'll visit with our economics classes and address the whole school in a presentation on central banks and their reaction to the financial crisis of 2008. He happens to be the author of the summer reading for the AP Economics course. These students are passionately struggling with the national and global issues he presents and are really excited about him coming to campus. This year we will have two sections of ornithology. It's likely the only such class offered at the high school level in South Carolina. Students are able to identify birds by sight, by calls, as well as understanding of migrations, anatomy, breeding, and ecology. Charleston certainly provides an ideal locale for this sort of academic class. Next year, our Chinese program, which started only four years ago, will move into middle school. We're honored to have been named the Confucius Classroom by the Confucius Institute. The program offers grants to schools that are supplemented by the Ministry of Education in China. Porter Gout is the only school in South Carolina to receive this designation and South Carolina ETB will be here to record the ceremony and will feature Porter Gout in their upcoming program. Our public speaking course in the upper school, a co-curricular offering that we developed within the English and Fine Arts Department, had over 80 students voluntarily enroll this year. We hope to make this a permanent part of our 10th grade curriculum. Our successful iPad program has grown to span from third to eighth grade next year, and we will begin a one-to-one -one laptop program in the ninth grade to eventually cover all four grades at the upper school. 
While we enjoy a great reputation in the community and in the education world, we're not satisfied with standing still. We're working now on our next strategic plan to serve as a guide in furthering and strengthening the school's mission. We have a very dedicated board of trustees that has extraordinary vision and is setting steps in motion to brighten our future. We're very thankful to, for their help and our foundation for continuing to enable these future plans. We look forward to sharing many of these incentives, initiatives with you in the coming months. And as we continue to plan for the future, we want your input. We'll be sending out a comprehensive survey to parents and past parents later this month. And you'll receive information soon on how you can help us assess our needs and move forward to make this a stronger place for our students. We are grateful to you course, for sending us your children, and it's a responsibility that we see as the greatest honor. Lee Iacocca, former chairman of the Chrysler Corporation, once said, in a completely rational society, the best of us would be teachers, and the rest of us would have to settle for something else. At Porter Dowd, we know a teacher can make a profound difference in the life of a student. Moments of discovery happen here every day. And we really, frankly, live for those moments. But when something is in a student's mind, and their heart, and their spirit, and it clicks and connects, it can be a powerful moment. They write, they speak, they perform, and they sing. And a voice we always knew was there. And we help them realize that potential that allows them to do what God has put them on this great earth to do. And every day, a passionate community of teachers, parents, coaches, staff, and administration goes to work to make that happen. I thank you for being part of Porter